so my good friend Tom dropped this old piano off and was just like, you know, whatever you can do with it, the best you can do with it. Just You may not even can use it, I don't know. Made me a drum with it. Man, look at that. When you think about the journey of a piano, a particular piano, um, the wood has been through a lot. From the manufacturing in Germany to a band director's parents' living room. Um, then passed to their son, later to a church basement, then purchased by a drummer named Tom Kim. This is his story. So you're fixing to watch this piano maybe transformed into a snare drum. Wait, 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 wait. Is it actually attached to the platforms or just to the piano, the straps? Is there any way they say a thousand pounds a piece. This is only 500 pounds. I'm gonna put this at level two just because communication yeah, is so important. Piano. That's gotta be. They said the average baby grand is 450 to 500 pounds. That's gotta be way more because I can bench. Well, anyway. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Okay, Brutus. Well, if I keep doing this, <laughs> it's just gonna slide more. And that where's the the. This board that I have, is it is the second half of that board on the top of that, or is it under it? You can definitely tell it's on that dolly now. You hear that crackling sound? Mm -hmm. so, these things aren't rated for a thousand pounds. They lied. I need you to move that dolly under here for me. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Where's your camera? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I might have to loosen those with a hammer first. Yeah. A piano hammer. Oh, I wanted Michael to see this too because this is part of the process of getting to the the meat and potatoes in my mm. in my piano. Meat and potatoes. <laughs> Don't get distracted, Mark. Sorry. I'm hungry. Of my old band director's piano that was going to be too costly to repair as a grand piano, but it is a beautiful German piano from the 50s. And uh, it's going to hopefully be made into a drum by Michael Alpaugh. It's going to show you a little bit about how this was going. And uh, if all goes well, we should have some wood harvested out of the soundboard, getting this uh, on its way down to Sylvester, Georgia. So let's see if we can Sylvester. show you how this sparks a little bit when it when it cuts, because this is uh, kind of unique. The uh, uh, piano guy I talked to. Uh, Dr. Perez at Baker University <coughs> turned me out at this piano dude. It's really cool. He told me this would uh, spark when you do this, and so far a few of these have, so it's kind of cool. Uh, let's see how this goes here. Ah, rats. When they get loose, they don't really cut that easy. They cut better when they're under tension. There's actually a tool called a Beckett tool. And if you can, your Beckett tool goes over the peg and it lets you cut right at the very top with just one whack of the hammer and the Beckett tool. And it makes a nice clean cut here. So when you take the peg, peg goes all the way through the, the uh, harp and into the wood. So each one of these has to be backed out. And I do have a, a tool that hooks to a drill and you need a drill that's at least three quarter horsepower to do it, which I have a nice DeWalt that will do that. And uh, so that will be next after cutting all these strings is to remove all these and also to take these big giant screws out, which we're gonna do it from the bottom, hopefully, and let this harp and gravity do its work. I'm gonna cut a few more of these and see where where we get. Actually, I want to stop. I want to try to use that drill tool and see how easy some of those come out just for the heck of it. 
Give me one of those buckets we got for the, <laughs> got for those percussion ensembles. <laughs> they turned into a head bucket. Now I might have to loosen those with a hammer first. Yeah. A piano hammer. I have one inside. Oh wait, stop! I smell the drill burning. Yeah, I certainly didn't like that. I think we can break them first. Yeah, I'm gonna have to break them first. Woo. So, that was my fear, is that it wasn't going to come out. Tom, that's gonna fall over on your head up on the top. Dude, it's getting ready to tip. The whole thing's about ready to tip. Face down. Let me see if there's any more pressure points to get this out. And if not, we might just have to push it over, but... I think you should say it SNL style. It's jammed! <laughs> it's what? Jammed! Take the 405 to the 628. Oh yeah, the California. There's some wood that's saying I don't want to let go, but... There's part of Tom that says you're going to let go anyway. Yeah, it sounds like there's still a screw somewhere. Okay, timber. Oh. That was a subtle piano. Um, I'm really worried. There is... Well, what's weird is it seems like it's just weight because there's no other screws that I can see anywhere that's holding this in. And the odd part is the rest of it only wanting to fall forward because of what I'm doing. Oh, that's the skid. Yeah. If this whole thing gets just unstable, I'm just going to let it go. And it's actually almost getting to that point. It's oh, getting to that whoa, point. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, I'm letting it go, okay? All right. Here it goes. Please be careful. Woo. So, that was my fear, is that it wasn't going to come out, and that <coughs> now I have a dust cap when it goes down. <coughs> Should open your garage door for a minute? Or, or no? Mission mostly accomplished until tomorrow. Just because it is really, this is the soundboard, one of the soundboards here of it. I really want to do it out of this part here, but um, it's very thin right there. It's only like um, three eighths of an inch thick. And I could possibly cut sections out of that there and utilize on it. You know, that may be something that I may think about doing. You can just tell how it... I mean, look at that, man. Most people don't realize that a piano is kind of done like a soundboard on a guitar. Like, you know, underneath, you look underneath an acoustic guitar, it has that soundboard there and these braces that are cut diagonally for, least, for the least amount of resistance right there and sustain. I mean, look at that. This piece here was the attached panel that was here. It was attached to it, so it was standing up right. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing exactly the part that I'm fixing to be cutting out here because I'm gonna try to show you here. This is the bottom piece of it. This is where the legs mount to. And I really wanna incorporate those holes and indentions into the drum here. So what we decided to do is, because of our thickness, we wanted to be able to utilize at least seven eighths of an inch and one of the reasons i really wanted to is delaminate the side of it but it would be very extremely time consuming to be able to do that and these pieces on the bottom are already straight and already thick yeah that would be very difficult that would probably bring it from Crap, a level a nail. two to a level five being able to delaminate some of that
old piano without busting it and breaking it. Right here is the leg bracket that I really want to incorporate into the side of the drum so bad. Because this bottom bracket was going to be holding up the whole piano. This is kind of held up the base. This is kind of like the frame that the legs were mounted underneath the bottom. The holes were the bottom with the footboards and stuff went through. So you can kind of see exactly. I just want you to notice how I'm using my pinky as a lock mechanism where I'm just kind of locking that finger together where it's very difficult to pull my hand into that blade. Now right here I did go back and recut this one more time just because I was really close to that edge and I didn't want any risk. Listen to that. Definitely such a nerd right here on this part. It's very cool. I'm not going to lie to you, I really had fun just taking these chords apart because it's amazing how well a piano is made and how tightly the joints are fitted. I mean, look, they come apart, but they're just, everything is just so tight and just handcrafted. the grains going this way? Yep, that's the one right there. That's the one that I really want to try to incorporate into the drum. You know, that was, it'd be, I just don't want it to be so boring. I really want to have some character. Even though. One of the struggles that you run into having this many holes in the drum and put things that you kind of run around, you're kind of limited as exactly how the hardware can. Because if you put a hardware, if you put a lug right there where a hole is already, you're gonna have a mess. And so you really want to lay it out carefully. And I've already erased this thing twice already. It didn't quite work out. I had to shift some things around in relation with the badge and how the uh, the whole um, theme of the feel is. I just you know, any time in life, there's says, always the only a first way to pick. do great. There's always the first pick. Love That's why I do. tend to do two of these things. You know, I just want to apologize right up front. I want to say I'm sorry just because of the fact I know I'm jumping the gun here. You're seeing a piano, now you're seeing a drum shell. What the heck? But, you know, if the biggest thing with this is being able to get your wood flat, get your wood very flat, cut your pieces, have all your pieces ready before, and then everything is all the same process once you get all your wood ready. That's the biggest part is knowing how to operate your tools and knowing how to be able to get your make your pieces flat and make but your pieces work for you. I really wanted to incorporate that circle piece onto the side of the drum when I mill it without bending this, but milling it, which is going to be very difficult when you're taking off three eighths of an inch. You can see it's just getting milled here. And things i didn't even realize that at this point yeah, one of these glue joints it wasn't my glue joint it wasn't mine but one of these piano glue joints come apart i think milling is probably one of the scariest parts that probably scares a lot of people about building drums because the milling part because the amount of wood you have to take off is insane it really is i mean some of the times you're taking off three-eighths of an inch um and a lot of the times you just it would bust, you know, so when you're milling stuff, things can bust to come apart. And depending on how you're doing your drum shells, it really just kind of depends on what kind of drum that you're making. Because these are stave drums. A lot of people build drums a lot of different ways, but stave drums have to be done a certain way. And, you know, these are some of the purest tones that you can get right here. These are solid pieces. And to be able to bend this, a lot of times you're going to, it's variables, you know. When you bend thin plies like that, you're going to have a lot of glue in it. So that can definitely make the sound different as well, too. You know, I really want to keep them as clean as I can, and I really like cutting stuff. So, so we're doing like an Airbnb experience where people can come and they can have bookings and where people can almost have a hand and just kind of a, an experience of building a drum through Airbnb. I'm not going to lie to you, it's a miracle, and I was so, so, so excited when I got to this point here, and I was able to keep that circle part in it, yes, 
so that really, I was really stoked about this one and that was actually the VIP one this one is right here the other one is that actually I still have it um, I haven't decided what we're gonna do with it yet but um, this one here definitely has a lot of sentimental value here uh, because this one I feel like it milled the cleanest um, this was the one that did not pop the other one did come loose at one of the joints I was able to glue back together and fix so I was very excited about that it also worked very well because I was able to keep that spot in there in correlation to how it was now if you're asking how why come it was completely ramble because when I mill it it takes out a lot of that material and I was just glad to get some of it out okay now just remember now this was the actual bracket that the leg is mounted to they grooved it out slid the bracket inside of it that was the circle The, I'm, I'm really a fan of the piano uh, wood uh, drum, the recycled piano wood. What do you think about it? I it just uh, mostly the impact. Uh, the when you when you hit it, it play it feels like me playing drums. You know, very commanding. It goes if I wanted to take it high, I could take it as high as I wanted it and play it as hard as I wanted it, and I felt like it would play back to me just what I wanted. This is the part of the process that it really just takes time right here because you're working, you're taking all the high spots out, sanding everything down completely flat. And I've already kind of run my barren edge once already just to get it roughed in. I didn't want to get the final pass here on this because I really want to kind of come back to this point a couple of times. But basically I want to be able to have a real flat surface that my edge will run across. So I'm just working this back and forth sandpaper 120 grit working it um flipping it back and forth keep working it checking it rubbing my fingers around the edges making sure everything is flat just like i want it before we proceed to the next step um, sometimes you have to work a little spots a little bit harder to get some areas out you know i just want to say too stave drums are some of the they're a little harder to do the edges on because the grain's running vertical instead of horizontal uh, when the runs running horizontal the edges are a lot a lot easier just because you don't have all those fibers to deal with um, you also don't have a lot of the restriction where you're actually going against the grain here you're going with the grain um, when it, like a segmented drum but this is a stave drum so there's a lot of resistance and it takes a lot more time to be able to dial these edges in. I'll come back to this stage right here multiple times throughout the build just to make sure nothing gets messed up or dinged or hit because sometimes you'll have an edge that is so sharp and it's ready and it don't take much just to touch the edge and it get a little ding in it that you gotta go and sand out.
just want to say I'm sorry about the jump to the actual. You know, so lucky to be able to do this. You know, creating a drum with the sound that defies the presence, crafting it to be passed down through generations like a treasure, with a unique tone like a sympathy beyond measure. This is an amazing, amazing story, and I just thank you, Tom. Thank you, Marge. Thank you for all the hard work to be able to get this piano to Georgia for us to be able to do, and just thank you for the. For the for the Mars, time and the ability so and for, uh, this piano the perseverance to, be able to, have a piece to, of to make this work. Your history, your, your a wise life. man once said, "Why don't you so just buy some wood?" And I can't wait to and if you ask me, just want to say a special shout out to all our Patreons. I love you guys over there. Special shout out to Patrick Morse, bro. That's amazing guy right there. That's an amazing guy. Um, special shout out to all our super 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 Patreons, man. I just love you guys over there, Dan. Gosh. Um, yes, that helps keeps videos like this going. So, yes, thank you for watching this video. God bless you, and keep drumming. Peace.